welcome back to my channel happy new year to you guys and happy new week to you guys too it's 2022 and i wish you guys all the best this new year I've seen my face for the first time my name is uche i'm a nigerian a mom of three and i live in toowoomba australia and for my returning subscribers i thank you guys for sticking with me last year 2021 and this is 2022 let us do it again this year so today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys cultural shock i experienced as a nigerian living in australia i wouldn't want to make this video so long so let's get started my first shock is that australian calls everyone on first name basis it was a shock to me as a nigerian moving here where we attach title to names a lot back home when i started my new job i couldn't understand why i should call my boss by their first name and I made those mistakes by putting sir, ma, mister, missus, and they would always correct me and tell me, no, call me John, just call me Amanda. You don't need to put a sir or a mister to me. Even in school as well, you called your lecturers by their first name. It was really a shock to me and it took me time to readjust to this. The second shock to me was that Australia value experience more than qualification. Don't get me wrong, we also value qualification, but your experience would give you the job more than the qualification you have. Unlike my country, Nigeria, reverse is the case. We value qualifications more than experience. So the tips I'm going to give you is if you're coming as a migrant or as a student and you want to find a job in this specific occupation, what you do do a voluntary job that will help you gain those Aussie experience. Another culture shock for me was the dignity of labor in Australia. Australia respects anyone, regardless of the job you do, whether you're a cleaner, you're a tradie, you're an engineer, you're a doctor, the same respect they're going to give a doctor or, or a lawyer or a teacher is going to give a cleaner or a farmer. Where I'm coming from, there are specific people that does a specific job and they regard them in a lower cadre. But here in Australia, everyone is equal. Nobody judge you what you do as long as you do legal things and not illegal things. Reverse is the case from where I'm coming from. So there is dignity of labor in Australia, which was a shock to me. Another culture shock for me is the breakfast culture here in Australia. Australians love their coffee a lot, be it hot or cold. Shops open as early as 6 a.m. just for people to have coffee. Back home, what are you drinking coffee for? Maybe just for you not to sleep at work or few homes that just add it to their breakfast. But here in Australia, I was shocked that almost all my colleagues come in in the morning. Everyone is holding one coffee cup or the other. So coffee is an in thing here in Australia. So Aussie love their coffee. Another one is the fitness culture here in Australia. Aussies love being fit. As early as 5 a.m. in the morning, whether it's winter or summer or spring, you will see people running, you see people walking their dogs, you see people jogging, and the same people again in the evening, you're going to see them again doing the same thing, which it was a shock to me because, hey, all of us around that 5 a.m., we are ready to go to work to beat all the traffics and all that, but us is they are still going to work, but they must do that wrong. It was a shock to me and also a motivation for me to join the bandwagon, you know, to keep fit. And even their gyms are so cheap that anyone can afford gym here. It's not meant for the top class or the lower class. Anybody can afford to go to gym here in Australia. So this culture shock again for me is the language. Aussie have different slangs. Yes, Australians speak English very fast. So when we got here, it was hard for me to understand what they are saying. Even though I was coming from an English speaking country, which English is not the problem, but because they speak very fast, because they shorten most of their words and they pronounce their words differently from what I know. So it was a bit shock for me to understand what they are actually saying. For example, they call sweaters, jumpers, they call trousers pants, they call sleepers tongs, <laughs> they call McDonald's markers, they call service station savo, they call barbecue barbie, and breakfast breaky 
afternoon avo and the like so yeah this is australian slang so for you to be an aussie you need to also learn the slangs it was a shock to me really because i was like sweater and we're like what is sweater i didn't know it was jumper that they meant and i was like oh i have a sleepers and they were like what sleepers i ended up finding out that it was tongs that they call what we nigerians call sleepers so yeah it was a sh culture shock it's a culture shock for me was a shop closes very early in australia from where i'm coming from lagos nigeria you would see people outside even 12 a.m coming back from one place to another but in australia majority of shop closes 5 to 5 30 p.m weekends four o'clock five o'clock all shops are closed the only shops that you see that are open till like 9 p.m or 10 in the city is the major retail shop back home especially in lagos you go out by 12 a.m you see one shop still open to buy one thing or the other so if you're coming to live in australia be cautious of the time make sure you buy the things you need but during weekend they all close like 6 p.m if you're a night crawler here too bad club here closes at 12 to 1 a.m club is over um, unlike nigeria that when you want to go to club you start from 11 p.m 12 a.m 1 a.m the club is about to start here in australia it's different the next shock here is the weather you use your google to check about australian weather they will tell you that australia is hot to me it's not true because australia has four seasons and it can change any time people living in melbourne and tasmania can testify to this you can be going out on a sunny day and within five minutes has changed to rainy day You're coming to australia to live or to visit to always check the weather reports so you will know how to dress up when you're going out There's some parts of australia that is hot like the northern part of australia is hot but every other place it's really cool where i live we can get up to minus during winter and because we are also in southern hemisphere our winters is different from every other people so our winters is from june to september so if you're coming to australia during that time do not take what you read in google that australia has a warm weather and wear a short because you will freeze to death we got here in august and we were just wearing a light jumper even though brisbane is not as cold as toowoomba but it was extremely cold we we're like what we thought yeah we learned in a hard way so australia weather might not be as cold as europe or canada or some other places but australia is not a hot country the way they put it the internet that australia is hot so be mindful of that the next one is the traffic lights uh, there's a whole lot of traffic lights every five kilometer drive you will see a traffic light so here i know they want us to be cautious of the way we drive here but there's a whole lot of traffic lights in australia that sometimes it gets tiring but it's for a good cause culture shocks seeing lots of traffic lights seeing lots of um, speed limits different from the urban to the city you can be driving down and you're on 40 zone and in two minutes you move to 60 in five minutes you're moving to 80 so it's confusing sometimes but yeah it's for us to be careful while we drive i understand that but to me coming from africa it was a shock another cultural shock that i got here was drinking from the tap it was a shock to me because i can't remember the last time i drank water from the tap back home in australia you drink water from your tap you don't need to go having a water dispenser or buying bottled water it's not a bad idea if you buy a bottle of water but it's just not that common they sell bottled water here for people that want to buy it but then hey the tap water is purified so everybody drinks from the tap even your kids and when your child forget their water bottle they can go to the bubbler and drink out of it or in the parks a lot of bubblers around that you just open fill up your bottle water or you put your drink out of the bubbler as well so they have purified all water the final shock that we had when we got here was the minimum wage australia is one of the countries that pays a very high minimum wage we don't pay monthly unlike home in nigeria where we pay monthly salary here in australia they pay weekly salary or fortnightly just to accommodate the expenses that you're going to make like paying your rent yes because rent here is on weekly basis but you can talk with your real estate and they can allow you pay fortnight and also claim your tax return back from the government 
back home in nigeria i have never claimed anything from the government that we are the ones giving the government but here in australia if you're working in a specific threshold every financial year when you have filled up your tax return the government gives you back something from the tax you have paid in a year yes the first time i received mine was like 2000 something and i was like what after working for a year i got something back from the government is it not lovely not everyone can get this tax back it depends on your threshold that's the amount you earn in a year if you earn a specific amount in a year you can get a tax back back and what are you getting back from the tax back if your job you use your car to take a client out or to do anything for your organization you can claim tax back you can claim the mileage you use to do one or two things even when you use your phone to make a call or to do something for your organization you can claim it as tax back during your financial year isn't that lovely so yes these are the things that was a shock to me that i can actually work and after working i get something back in return from the government all this other one or final but i don't want to finish this without touching these things that i feel is important for a nigerian coming here one is the distance distance from australia to everywhere is a shock to me because and um, when we arrived here there are some things that i thought that i was going to see in australia that i have seen in the uk in canada and in us maybe because those other countries are closer to nigeria than australia but they are not here so it was hard for us to adjust when you want to send something from home you pay triple of um what you bought that thing for example i want to order my cream from back home i can buy the cream for a hundred dollars and i'm going to use like 250 dollars to ship them to australia because of the this cost a whole lot of money to ship things from nigeria to australia so that's another culture shock to me because every time i want to get something i was like why am i paying triple of postal than what i got this thing and also apart from shipping things australia is broad I live in Queensland I can drive 12 hours and I'm still in Queensland so Australia is not a small continent it's not a small state you wouldn't know that till you get um, when you use a GPS and it tells you 10 minutes drive you think you can do a walk for that 10 minutes drive that 10 minutes drive back home will be like a 13 minutes drive back home so the distance in Australia is quite huge from different states so it's a culture shock to me and another shock that I have is the Sunday service here Australia is a Christian continent and they allow people to practice any religions that you believe in don't discriminate whether you're Hindu or Christian or a Muslim or anything you can practice whatever you want to practice here so the first day we went to church here as a Nigerian living here we were expecting a whole lot maybe the speakers out like the way we see it back home we got there we couldn't even hear a bed singing and we're like are you sure we are at the right place my husband was like yes you are at the right place because the gps said so not until we opened the door and entered inside that's when we finally realized that we are at church and everyone was calm yes they were singing but there was no band there was no choristers dressed up in their robes you know those kind of feelings you have in Nigerian churches we didn't have that feel the service ended within one hour so we're like what when did we have time to pray when did we have time to clap and dance and all that that the service has ended it was a great experience for us and it was a big culture shock to us as well these are the few cultural shock that we witnessed as a Nigerian living in Australia. End of my video and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you have any questions concerning how you can migrate to Australia or you want to know more about Australia, you can actually leave it in the comment section and I promise you that I will get back to you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel or you're passing by and you saw this channel, please subscribe to my channel. I will appreciate it if you do. And whenever you are watching my video, please don't skip the ad you're helping me a lot if you can watch my ad up to a minute it would help my ministry a lot don't forget to share my videos comments like you never know who this video would help in the future i appreciate you guys for always being there for me and i will see you guys in my next video bye